Hello students, welcome to the lecture on barriers on communication. After this lecture, you will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the categorization of barriers, define the technical aspects in communication barriers, discuss the effect of communication barriers in business communication, explain the overcoming the barriers in communication. Let us now start with what is communication. Communication is a process beginning with a sender who encodes the message and passes it through some channel to the receiver who decodes the message. Communication is fruitful if and only if the messages sent by the sender are interpreted with same meaning by the receiver. If any kind of disturbance blocks any step of communication, the message will be destroyed. Communication is a process through which we convey our idea to someone or a group of people. It is said to be effective if the idea is conveyed clearly and unambiguously. Communication becomes successful only if the receiver understands what the sender is trying to convey. If our message is not clearly interpreted or the receiver does not give the desired feedback, we should understand that you are facing a communication barrier. Many socio-psychologists believe that there is 50 to 70 percent loss of meaning while conveying the message from a sender to a receiver. We should understand these barriers as they can create hurdles in our professional and personal life too. There are several barriers that affect the flow of communication in an organization. These barriers interrupt the flow of communication from the sender to the receiver, thus making communication ineffective. It is essential for managers to overcome these barriers. The main barriers of communications are physical barriers, perceptual barriers, emotional barriers, cultural barriers, language barriers, gender barriers and interpersonal barriers. Let us talk about each one of them in detail. Physical barriers. The first barrier to communication is the physical barrier. This means we are physically separated with the people from our organization. Some offices have separate cubicles for each employee while others are placed in a secluded office room. Other times the separation is much larger since working from home has been a trend among companies these days. Also if you have a very large office space our tables might be placed far away from each other making it difficult for you to go out of your way just to talk to other employees. When this happens it is always important that you find different means to communicate. We can call them on the phone, spend lunch with our office mates and do other stuff out of work with them to get to know them more. Physical barriers in the workplace include marked out territories, empires and fiefdoms. repeat, into which strangers are not allowed, closed office doors, barrier screens, separate areas for people of different status, large working areas or working in one that is physically separate from others. Research shows that one of the most important factors in building cohesion cohesive teams is proximity perceptual barriers another hindrance could be a perceptual barriers this is one of the most common barriers to communication because our actions words and mannerism are open to other people's interpretation perception may differ depending on the cultural emotional personal and spiritual background of the person it's very easy to make assumption without clarifying what the other person means by what he said or by his movement when this happens communication is blocked right away and conflict arises that is why it is important to clarify things before reaching negativity the problem with communicating with others is that we all see the world differently emotional barriers emotional state at a particular point of time also affects communication if the receiver feels that communicator is angry he interprets that the information being sent is very bad while he takes it differently if the communicator is happy and jovial one of the chief barriers to open and free communication is the emotional barrier it is comprised mainly of fear mistrust and suspicion the roots of our emotional mistrust of others lie in our childhood and infancy when we were taught to be careful what we said to others mind your peace and cues do not speak until you are spoken to children should be seen and not heard 
As a result, many people hold back from communicating their thoughts and feelings to others. They feel vulnerable. While some caution may be wise in certain relationships, excessive fear of what others might think of us can stunt our development as effective communicators and our ability to form meaningful relationships. Cultural Barriers Cultural barriers are a result of living in an ever-shrinking world. Different cultures, whether they are a societal culture of a race or simply the work culture of a company, can hinder developed communication if two different cultures clash. When we join a group and wish to remain in it, sooner or later we need to adopt the behavior patterns of the group. These are the behaviors that the group accepts as signs of belonging. The group rewards such behavior through acts of recognition, approval and inclusion in groups which are happy to accept you and where you are happy to confirm there is a mutuality of interest and a high level of win-win contact where however there are barriers to your membership of a group a high level of game playing replaces good communication language barriers language that describe what we want to say in our terms may present barriers to others who are not familiar with our expression buzzwords and jargon in a global marketplace the greatest compliment we can pay another person is to talk in their language incapability or failure to communication in a language that is known to both sender and the receiver is the most crucial barrier to effective communication Wrong or out of place words, mispronounced sounds, incorrect grammar and syntax as well as difference in accent, lack of clarity could lead to misunderstanding between the sender and the receiver while conversing or writing. Gender barriers there are distinct differences between the speech patterns in a man and those in a woman. A woman speaks between 22,000 and 25,000 words a day, whereas a man speaks between 7,000 and 10,000. In childhood, girls speak earlier than boys and at the age of three, half a vocabulary twice that of boys. The reason for this lies in the wiring of a man's and woman's brain. When a man talks, his speech is located in the left side of the brain but in no specific area. When a woman talks, the speech is located in both hemispheres and in two specific locations. This means that a man talks in a linear, logical and compartmentalized way, features of left brain thinking, whereas a woman talks more freely mixing logic and emotion, features of both sides of the brain. Interpersonal barriers. There are six levels of which people can distance themselves from one another. Withdrawal is an absence of interpersonal contact. It is both refusal to be in touch and time alone. Rituals. These are meaningless, repetitive routines devoid of real contact. Pastimes. They filled up time with others in social but superficial activities. Working activities are those tasks which follow the rules and procedures of contact but no more. Games are subtle, manipulative interactions which are about winning and losing. They include rackets and stamps. Closeness is the aim of interpersonal contact where there is a high level of honesty and acceptance of yourself and others. Working on improving our communication is a broad brush activity. We have to change our thoughts, our feelings and physical connection. That way, we can break down the barriers that get in our way and start building relationships that really work. Let us now talk on a few technical aspects in communication barriers as narrated by Murphy's Laws on Communication. The basic in this law on communication are communication usually fails except by chance it succeeds. On account of various barriers, the possibility of success in the flow of communication is rare. People receive the message in their own way. If the message can be understood in different ways, it will be understood in just the way that does the most harm. In most of the cases, the most harmful side of communication is considered. Filtering. It refers to the sender manipulating information so that the receiver will see it as more favorable. In organization, the information is condensed and synthesized. Objective information does not reach to the authority. The more the vertical levels in organization hierarchy, the more opportunities there are for filtering. Meta communication. In a communication apart from the message, there is a meta message. Meta message exists in the people's mind because of their actions such as being hard to contact. 
Noise and communication process. Noise can enter the communication process because of situational factors. It is one of the factors influencing the communication process. Noise is mostly related to mechanical distraction. A few noise distractions are human sounds, traffic, bird chirping, etc. An organization is an individual's first home as one spends the maximum time here only. No organization runs for charity. It is really important that the organization achieve its goals. How does an organization become successful? How will an organization achieve its goals? The employees are the assets for any organization and the profitability of any organization is directly proportional to the labor put by its employees. Putting labor does not mean getting involved in hard physical work or digging the gold mines. It actually refers to the smart work done by employees, transparency between the team members, free flow of information from the superior to the subordinates. How does free flow of information happen? How is the transparency between the team members achieved? Through communication, not only through communication, but effective communication. In organization, the barriers in communication go a long way in distortion of the message and the information does not reach in its desired form. Imagine a situation where we want some report from our team's members which needs to be forwarded to the managing director of the organization. What if our team misinterprets your information, screws up the project and fails to submit it within the deadline? The managing director will literally sit on our head and make our life miserable. The poor communication can actually cost you your job. Let us now understand how barriers in communication affect business communication. Noise acts as devil in business communication. Any information downloaded at a noisy place is bound to get distorted and result in a complete mess. Petty wanted to go through the complete budget of the sales, marketing and the operation team. She passed on this information to Joe at his workstation around which lots of other employees were shouting. The base phone was constantly ringing and the photocopier machine was making a terrible noise. At the end of the day, Joe submitted the report but the budget for the operation team was missing in the report. Joe actually had heard only about sales and marketing department and thus skipped the report of the operations team. Petty fired Joe and even stopped his appraisal. Unwanted distraction, noise, chit chats of the other employees, etc., played the culprit, and poor Joe missed out on his promotion. Noise reduces the changes of the correct flow of information from the sender to the receiver. If the office is noisy, errors are bound to happen, and thus increasing conflicts among the team members and decreasing the efficiency of the employees. Unorganized and haphazard thoughts also lead to ineffective communication in organization. Business communication are bound to suffer due to ineffective communication. If any individual wants something from his team members, first he himself must be very clear what actually he expects from his team. The boss must clearly mention his team members' key responsibility areas in clear words to avoid wastage of manpower duplicity of work, effective time, management, and more output from them. Not cross-checking among themselves or with the superiors also spoils the business communication to a large extent. For example, Rima was sharing her phone number with her client and she never bothered to verify with her client whether he has noted the correct number or not. One day, the client had a major query and he had to discuss with Rima on an urgent basis. He kept on trying the same number which Rima gave but someone else was responding. He then had to call the front desk lady to get connected with Rima and obviously he was furious. The client had wrongly noted Rima's number and thus wasted his precious time and lost his temper. While sharing any important contact number, it is the responsibility of the speaker to cross-check with the listener. Email IDs must be spelled out properly to avoid wrong spellings and unnecessary wastage of time. During any business meeting, presentation or seminar, the speaker has to be very careful about his pitch 
and tone. It has been observed that during seminars or presentation, only the front benches are attentive. The last benches are almost lost in their own sweet world. The person who chairs the meeting has to speak very clearly, has to be very confident and must maintain a tone audible to everyone, even to the individual sitting on the last row. Information must pass to them also. Try to make the seminar or the meeting interactive. Do not just speak. Also invite questions from the team. After any seminar or meeting, the superior or the in charge must send the minutes of the meeting through a mail to all the required recipients to avoid last minute confusions and discrepancies. The speaker must ensure whether everyone is clear or not. In any organization, it is mandatory to understand which employee can do a particular assignment and which employee is not fit for a particular role. In any organization before assigning responsibilities to the employees, it is a must to understand the employee and his area of specialization and interest. Communication will be for sure ineffective if a person from an accounting background is asked to deliver a presentation on sales technique. He is bound to get nervous and the message will fail in creating the required impact. Do not just impose work on any employee, give him the work he enjoys doing the most. Difference in thought process also results in a poor communication in business areas. A boss and the employee can never think on the same level. Let us try to understand the situation with the help of an example. Jude to Harry. Harry, I need the complete financial report by end of the day. By financial report, Jude actually meant the complete financial analysis which would include the complete details of how much the company spends in advertising, promotional activities and other marketing activities, analyze the inflow and outflow of expenditure patterns and so on. Harry could never understand Jude's thought process. He simply compiled the expenditure details and handed over to Jude. Jude was obviously not happy. He was expecting much more from Harry. Harry had to resubmit the project resulting in duplicacy of effort and wastage of time. Jude should have made it very clear from the very beginning what all he was expecting from Harry. He kept half of his things within himself and did not share with Harry. Poor Harry had to redo his work. Every individual has a different mindset, different level of understanding and thus it is important to share each and every detail with others and clarify the things from the very beginning. One should remember that the listeners are also a part of the conversation. The listener must give their feedback at the end of the conversation. If we are not clear what our boss is expecting out of you, or what are actually supposed to do, please ask. Do not hesitate, ask questions. Do not hide our queries, ask and clear doubts then and there only. For the successful running of an organization, it is important that transparency is maintained among the employees at all levels. Effective communication reduces the error rate, reduces conflicts and misunderstandings and in turn increases the profitability of the organization. Every employee must try their level best to avoid the communication barriers in organizations for an effective business communication. There is a lot of communication barriers faced these days by all. The message intended by the sender is not understood by the receiver in the same terms and sense. Thus, communication breakdown occurs. It is essential to deal and cope up with these communication barriers so as to ensure smooth and effective communication. Let us talk about how to overcome these barriers of communication. Eliminating differences in perception. The organization should ensure that it is recruiting right individuals on the job. It is the responsibility of the interviewer to ensure that the interviewee has command over the written and spoken language. There should be proper induction programs so that the policies of the company Company are clear to all the employees. There should be proper trainings conducted for required employees. Use of simple language. Use of simple and clear words should be emphasized. Use of ambiguous words and jargon should be avoided. Reduction and elimination of noise levels. Noise is the main communication barriers which must be overcome on priority basis. It is essential to identify the source of noise and then eliminate that source. Active listening. 
Listen attentively and carefully. There is a difference between listening and hearing. Active listening means hearing with proper understanding of the message that is heard. By asking questions, the speaker can ensure whether his or her message is understood or not by the receiver in the same terms as intended by the speaker. Emotional state. During communication, one should make effective use of body language. He or she should not show their emotions while communication as the receiver might misinterpret the message being delivered. Simple organizational structure. The organizational structure should not be complex. The number of hierarchical levels should be optimum. There should be an ideal span of control within the organization. Simpler the organization structure, the more effective will be the communication. Avoid information overload. The managers should know how to prioritize their work. They should not overload themselves with the work. They should spend quality time with their subordinates and should listen to their problems and feedbacks actively. Give constructive feedback. Avoid giving negative feedback. The contents of the feedback might be negative, but it should be delivered constructively. Constructive feedback will lead to effective communication between the superior and subordinate. Proper media selection. The manager should properly select the medium of communication. Simple messages should be conveyed orally, like face-to-face -face interaction or meetings. Use of written means of communication should be encouraged for delivering complex messages. For significant messages, reminders can be given by using written means of communication such as memos, notices, etc. Flexibility in meeting the targets. For effective communication in an organization, the manager should ensure that the individuals are meeting their targets timely without skipping the formal channels of communication. There should not be much pressure on employees to meet their targets. Let us now summarize what we have learned in, in this section. To make written communications more effective, skills of language use, vocabulary, writing, style and organization of information are necessary. Nonverbal communication is the process of sending and receiving information without using written or spoken language. In an organization, communication is a dynamic network of vertical and horizontal exchange of messages. The process of communication may be blocked for many reasons. They are called barriers to communication. Noise is a physical barrier to effective communication.